All right, salam, nerds. This is me, Watch With Neves, uh, and I am here with my co-host, Jazz. What's up, Jazz? Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> it is almost Ramadan, so I respect you going full-blown. Mm-hmm. I got my Fasting and the Furious t-shirt on, thanks oh, to halalshirts.com. I should have worn that. Yeah, yeah. Shout out to Halal so, Shirts for giving us shirts. Thank you. <laughs> Yes, yes. So we got that. So we got a special guest today. Our guest is Ash. She is one of the lead persons on TikTok who is talking about Miss Marvel. Uh, what's up, Ash? Uh, just thanks for having me. Um, it's kind of been a stressful week for Miss Marvel. So, you know, <laughs> glad, to, glad to vent about that. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, well. Speaking of venting, I I have to let everybody. J- Jazz loves my transitions. That's why he's talking. <laughs> he's just so smooth at them. <laughs> I know. Okay, so some of you, we would like to apologize because we were not on the air for two weeks, and a lot of that is because of me. I had a little bit of an incident. It's really weird incident. Um, I I it affected me quite a bit. I I left TikTok. Um, I made my stuff private. I wasn't posting anything. And what happened was really strange. Basically, I kind of got docs, but in a weird way. Um, basically, what happened is, like, Arista Auntie doxed me. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know. It's, I know. People are probably wondering, like, why is Jazz snickering so much? What's so funny about something so traumatic? <laughs> so, it... And it's not, not even like a regular doc, like a reverse doc thing, right? So, like, what happens is, like, you know how, like, white people are always afraid that, like, the shit they did do in real life will get, like, exposed on the internet? For brown people, it's the opposite. You're worried that the shit you do on the internet will get exposed <laughs> to your real life. And that's and that's kind of what happened to me. So, this is what happened. Uh, if you don't know what Arista Auntie is, it's basically a, uh, like, Indian matchmaker. It's the lady who finds, like, you know, suitors for you is someone that uh, your parents want to hook you up with, right? For marriage. Oh, got it. So um, auntie who's all up in your business. Okay, makes sense. Yeah, she's all up in your business, right? So basically what happened was she introduced me to the uh, – she gave me the number of this girl. And I text this girl, didn't hear nothing back. Two days go by, didn't hear nothing back. I was like, all right, mom, I don't think she's interested. But my mom called back and asked, like, oh, what happened? This girl looked me up. I don't know how she found me because I don't even use my real name on TikTok and on Facebook. But she found my Facebook. She found my TikTok. She took screen caps and sent it to the Rista auntie saying, I'm not interested in him. He makes weird videos on the Internet. He has weird hair. He is he is fatter than the pictures you showed me. And he is darker than the pictures you showed me. Wow. This is what this girl said. And, like, my parents were, like, first of all, they were, like, what the hell are you doing on the internet? Like, I'm, like, and, like, I had to explain to them, like, I'm talking about reality shows. And I was, like, oh. And you're famous. Yeah, like, like, it's, it's, oh, my God. It was really, it was traumatizing for me, man. Like, it was so weird. I felt violated. Like, she went out of her way to find this information, shared it with this auntie, and this auntie's, like, really mad. She's, like, I don't want to take him as a client and telling my parents that I need to delete all this stuff. And I'm just, like. It was stressing me out, and I just left TikTok. I left uh, – I, I didn't want to do the podcast, and I was, like, debating to ever go back, right? And I didn't want this person to have that much power over me that, like, I'm going to give up everything because, like, of something she said. But, like, I also know that, like, is a stigma with people, especially guys who have, like, a big following. It's like a red flag if somebody is an influencer, right, especially if you're brown. And I was like, I always felt like I was the exception because I'm like, I'm just talking about movies. I'm not trying to be famous, right? I just want to talk. I want to be famous adjacent, right? I just want to talk <laughs> about famous people. Um, but yeah, it, it really fucked me up and I didn't want to do this anymore. Yes, and I took some time. Truth, and We what? all know the truth. You're doing this for those swimsuit models on Instagram to follow you. <laughs> we know what you're doing on the no, weekend. Man. No, <laughs> so so look, I've, He's a very I've always point, said that sorry. I... I always said that I would give up all this stuff if somebody asked me to, but it's just the fact that this person like went out of their way, found all this information, sent it to this auntie in the community, and like all these people know about it now, and it's just like weird to me, man. I felt like weird about it. Yeah, no. So it's actually funny you mentioned like an Indian matchmaker because uh, my boyfriend's white, and my mom has actually threatened me a couple times trying to find me. <laughs> like, 
first, she didn't really like him. So she was like, you know, I, I could always, you know, I could find you a good husband. And I'm just yeah. like, oh, God. Like, my grandmother still doesn't even know about um about him because yeah. I'm just, I'm worried she's just going to be like, nope, this one won't do. <laughs> you saw what your mom did. I know. I know. We got to live double lives, man. That's, that's, uh, <laughs> that's the burden of a brown kid. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know and what like, y'all are talking I'm, about. I'm, My parents are <laughs> fully accepting of this. Yeah. I can hit a white yeah, girl if I wanted yeah. to. It's all good. And I'm just going to yeah. laugh at y'all's trauma. <laughs> I, I, I'm, you're all, you're all, oh, yeah, no. I was about, I was gonna about say, to mention um, I'm second gen. So my parents are more okay with it, of me being internet famous. They're just like, make sure that this doesn't affect your job in the future. Fair. Yeah. And I don't do anything like controversial like like the most controversial thing i'll do is like talk about like what happened on the bachelor this week right <laughs> or like what happened on like star wars like it's it's weird that like i don't know i don't know it was weird your thirst traps with in the gym dude <laughs> I, I no no those are on my personal instagram those oh, are private. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> i guess only i can see those <laughs> Also, you want to know what's really fucked up? The the picture that she got that she said that I was too dark and too fat. I was literally running the New York City marathon in those pictures. So like I was like dark because of the sun, obviously. And like like and even if I was dark, like what the fuck, man? What the yeah, fuck? Are we that's... past this shit, man? Yeah, like, fuck that. What the hell? Oh no, that's... and then like like that, that just annoyed me and the fact that like yo i was running but like okay you know why i look fat i had candies all on me like granola bars and like these packets <laughs> so like i had this vest that i was wearing so i looked puffy and also i'm running so like you know my cheeks are like it was like a it was like a picture that the marathon people took and like the the it's weird that she's like calling me fat while i'm literally running a marathon <laughs> No, so I, I actually have a funny story from high school. So uh, there was only one other Indian kid in my class. And Whoa. so, yeah, it, it was insane. No, but um, yeah. basically uh, he came back from like summer break or like winter break or something. And he had, you know, obviously gotten like a tan and went a few shades darker. And so our teacher, uh, our engineering teacher asked him like, oh, hey, where'd you go over spring break? And then he just looked him dead in the eyes and went, the sun. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Oh my god. Why That's is colorism so still a thing? <laughs> I don't know, man. In this day and age, it feels like a slap in the face. <laughs> nah, but Neves, let's be real. You dodged a bullet here. <laughs> yeah. Like, holy like... hell. Your whole family dodged a bullet here. <laughs> and if that rich the auntie like... is upset with you making videos on the internet, she needs to get a life. <laughs> yeah, but... I don't know, man. Stuff like that still gets to me. Like, I'm sensitive. I don't know. But anyways, yeah, <laughs> exactly. But let's talk about something else. Let's talk about <laughs> something big what, no that's more trauma? going on. <laughs> yeah, let's talk, yeah, let's talk about, well, so speaking of trauma, I think a, something traumatic happened at the Oscars this week. Oh, so sure, I think yeah. we can talk about a little bit at the Oscars. Now, I don't want to talk about the slap. I feel like that's been talked to death. Mm -hmm. I don't care about it. Um... I feel like also like there's some things that like people should not talk about, especially when it's like involved like a community that you're not a part of, mm -hmm. right? I've listened to a lot of people on TikTok and I'm like, you gotta listen first. Before you start making these freaking videos and posting shit, listen to a few people before you throw in your two cents. And it seems like it's a conversations that not everyone should be a part of. Um, but what is interesting to me is people's reactions to that. And some people have gone out of their way to have the most asinine takes to this whole thing <laughs> and it's super weird how outraged some people are um because like if they're saying like it's the worst thing the oscars ever done right there's so many horrible things the oscars have done right they've given oscars to like pedophile they've like freaking booed off a native american woman <laughs> off stage somebody was gonna fight a native american woman off stage right john wayne mm -hmm. like this is not the worst thing that they've done. So, like, calm down, Karen. <laughs> but there are some really cool things that happen at the Oscars, and I want to talk about that. So I want to focus on that instead. And one of that is The Long Goodbye got nominated and won Best Short Film 
And Riz, our, our boy Riz Ahmed took home an Academy Award. But yeah, he won. The story is an amazing story. It's about 15 minutes long, maybe 12 minutes long. It's free on YouTube. It's called A Long Goodbye. Uh, check it out if you can. It's, it's, a, it's an amazing story. And there's another movie that he produced called Flea which is also amazing. Um, it's a documentary done in animation style, and it's about a queer Afghan man and how he became, uh, how they escaped Afghanistan, and they went to Russia for a while, and they tried to get to Poland, and like how they were kind of trafficked, and like how human traffickers work. It's crazy. It is such a good movie, and it's it sucks because I had to watch it in an airport, and I'm like crying and the person looks over to me it's like why is this brown man crying what is he about to do <laughs> i'm like i'm just watching a sad movie i'm not gonna do anything how do we know <laughs> like, if, if i started praying that would have been it i would have been escorted off the plane <laughs> but flea is an amazing movie i highly recommend it check it out uh what else happened at the oscars anything else worth noting jazz anything else you want to talk about uh there's one thing that I'm actually really offended about, and I thought it was more offensive mm. than Slap, actually. Um, I can't remember who they were, but there was three actresses, and they were shitting on animation in movies. Oh, it, it was uh, the three uh, girls who played, like, the live-action Disney princesses. Um, it was the girl who played Ariel, Cinderella, and uh, Jasmine. Yeah, screw I, all I of them. <laughs> oh, yeah. It was, it was Naomi Scott, uh, Haley. Bailey, I think her name yeah. is from uh, Gronish, and I don't know who the third one was. Right, um, um, Cinderella. The... I am so tired of people shitting on animation. Like, I get yeah. it, it's Hollywood. Oh my god, VFX. It's a different department. It sucks. No, I, but like, it's still a good medium to make content. It's still enjoyable. Mm -hmm. I still feel feelings. All right, now. I don't know if a lot of people know this, but I'm a big anime fan, right? Uh, right I have sure. literally cried over an animated boat. I'm not joking. I have cried over a boat when it sank. Was it a tugboat? Did it tug at your heartstrings? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> ah, that's good. You have no idea, man. Okay, I'm going to show you a scene one day, right? But anyways, like I have cried over a boat, and, and you're telling me that this medium is not worthwhile, especially at the Oscars. No. Like, yeah. that's just garbage. And I I was actually I've, really offended at that moment. <laughs> yeah, I've cried in uh, Graves of Fireflies. I don't know if anyone see that, but that is a anime movie that will destroy you. It's it's heartbreaking. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a, they're really good mediums, man. And I, I get it. Like, kids love the songs and they'll play them over and over again. But that doesn't mean the movie isn't great. That doesn't mean Encanto wasn't about generational trauma and it wasn't about, like, uh, how the black sheep in the family is treated and all the toxicity in these fam uh, families. Like, great movie. Amazing. So what if this, this kids want to watch it over and over again? And also, we don't give kids enough credit, man. They're smart. They pick up on a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was, yeah, that was, that was pretty, th honestly, if the slap didn't happen, everybody would have been talking about this. Yeah, I think, I agree, actually, yeah. yeah. I, that was really yeah. the most offensive moment to me, mm -hmm. so. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. I mean, no, like, don't get me I wrong. I'm um, not condoning the violence Will Smith did. Like, but uh, aside <laughs> from that one, the most offensive thing at the Oscars it's that happened the most was that. <laughs> the, uh, I think the Mitchells vs. the Machine even post a, uh, a, a a tweet or something or a Instagram post saying like animation is cinema, mm -hmm. like a little clap back at them, which I thought was pretty cool. Good, thank God. Yeah. I mean. Yeah. I didn't see you talk much but, about mainly because, like, I've also been avoiding social media lately because of the whole Will Smith thing. But, yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> uh, if any of you out there are going to shit on animation, anime, whatever, um, to each their own. And I hope one day you see the light and come to our side and enjoy good content. Yes. That's all I yes. can say. I, I. I am slowly getting into anime. I'm not a big anime person, but like I got into Attack on Titans and I watch all the Studio Ghibli stuff. Love it. Every anime that people have recommended, amazing. But then there's some that like I I, I just don't know where to start. There's like a thousand episodes, bro. I can't do it. Oh yeah, that's the it. anime I was talking about. <laughs> Yeah, like I can't do Naruto and One Piece. Oh. There's just so many episodes. There's just so many. Yeah, had my had my dad not started me off on Naruto when I was like five years old, I would I would not have even seen it. I wouldn't even try and start. Yeah. It. yeah. Well, anyways, animation is awesome. 
freaking anime is awesome uh it needs to be treated like cinema and until you know one of these days like i honestly think there's some animation movies out there that should have gotten best film not just best animated film best film right yeah, there's some that like, are just uh, amazing like yeah um, oh yeah dude that's another movie i cried at man oh uh, coco coco was amazing minutes. oh remember oh, me bro don't 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 don't, don't. <laughs> oh man it's, it's i can't make damn. it <laughs> I know, I know. We can't, we can't do it. All right. Um, let's talk about something else. <laughs> let's talk about since it is almost Ramadan, and the day before Ramadan is John's Rot, which means Moon Night. <laughs> let's that was let's not talk what about. Was go with that. <laughs> let's talk about the show Moon Night, which is just premiered today. <laughs> Outstanding <laughs> transition. <laughs> Yeah, he was right. Your transitions are great. <laughs> I thought he was going to Miss Marvel because they had the whole John Rath thing. But no, he went into Moon Knight. I flipped it. I flipped it on you guys. <laughs> okay. I'm telling you, man. I, I'm the transition king. <laughs> yeah. Yes, oh, Moon man. Knight. Let's talk about Moon Knight. Um, did you guys all watch it? Yes, I watched it this morning, right before I got into class. Okay. Oh, yeah, perfect, we all watched perfect. it. I was up at the 2 a.m. Central Time last night when we watched it, so. Oh, I can't do that, man. I hate this, man. I hate the fact that it's, like, fucking 3 o'clock in the morning. I, I can't do it. It's it's yeah, too much. I, 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 it's too much for me. I used to be able to do it when they were releasing, like, Falcon and the Winter Soldier because it would be on Friday, and I did not have in-person classes. So all I had oh, to do yeah, in the yeah. morning was just, you know, rise out of bed like Dracula or something and just open up my laptop and go back to sleep. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're supposed to pay attention in class. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I passed. That's As a matters. former That's professor, um, you're supposed to be. <laughs> I was kidding. Listen, Jazz, American schools just teach you enough to pass exams. They don't really teach you, teach you stuff. That's also you know this. And everything you yeah, learn you know in college this. is useless. You're going to learn more on the job anyways. Exactly. But Moon Knight. Uh, <laughs> it starts off pretty exciting. I, yeah. I kind of feel it. Um, to have that guy make glass and put it in his shoes and just start walking around super culty-like, because he has to, like, judge people. And it's weird, because he judges people not on their past, but, like, their future, too. So that's kind of a weird concept. Mm -hmm. I It's like, he was saying something like, oh, they could have gotten rid of Hitler and prevented him before that happened. Um, it was which like is God. interesting. The, yeah, it was, the, the... it's a god. Uh, Amit. Amit, Amit yeah, god. that's what it was. He, yeah. He's like an alligator. I believe. So it was cool. I, I like that they're bringing in this like Egyptian mythology or, or religion or whatever it, it is uh, into this because there's a lot of cool stuff on it. But what I really like about this show is they have a lot of people of Egyptian descent on the show. It was directed by Mohammed Diab, I believe his name is. Yes. There was another guy, I have it in my notes. His name was Sabir Pirzada. I think he's a writer on the show. And then the even the score, the score was done by a guy named Hamish Nazi, who is apparently a huge, I might not have said his name right, but he's a huge composer in Egypt, which is cool. I love the fact that they're bringing in these people and the fact that, you know, Egyptian culture is such a big part of this show. They're actually bringing in people who know about like the music, the writing, the directing. Like, it's really cool to see it. I feel like they're taking good care of a show, which is, you know, a good sign for Miss Marvel if, uh, if we're getting some good Egyptian representation here. How do you feel? about Poe becoming, not Poe, sorry, <laughs> I skewed that up. Yeah. Oscar <laughs> Isaac, going from Star Wars to going to Dune to going to this, somewhere in the middle, he became... That man's everywhere, man. Yeah, he, he you know was, what? He uh, was... Gomez Adams in the Adams family. <laughs> Wait, he was? Oh, that man is... Yeah. <laughs> that's wild. You know what's really interesting? If I had a nickel for every time Oscar Isaac played in some kind of Egyptian god, I would have two nickels, which is not a lot, but it's strange that it happened twice because he also played Apocalypse in X-Men. That's right. He did. He also played Apocalypse that. in X-Men, right? Age of Whoa. Apocalypse. He was <laughs> what, if, what if these Marvel universes collide? What, what then? Yo, Multiverse of Madness, you might see him as Apocalypse. Who knows? <laughs> what if there's a Moon Knight cameo? 
<laughs> That'd be so wild, right? <laughs> and the Spider-Man meme pointing at each other. <laughs> <laughs> like Apocalypse and Moon Knight just pointing at each other. I don't know. I, I've heard that there's going to be like 15 different cameos in Multiverse of Madness, so it 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 could happen. Listen, as soon as a Multiverse of Madness TikTok comes up, scroll because I don't want to know. I don't want to know. I don't want to know. I want to be surprised because everything is spoiled. Like yeah. I know so many people that are going to be on there. Like it's crazy. Like I think Rihanna is going to be on there. That's one of the, like it's crazy. Like everyone you could think of, people are talking about. It's so weird. I, I think that Peacemaker is going to come in. I don't know how. He's, <laughs> you know, Portal's going to open up. Just you know. Is it? Wait, is Peacemaker? I would love DC to see Vigilante or... in there. Is he Marvel? He, he, I don't he, even know. DC. Wow. You While we're at it, you, you know what know. then? Bring in Ryan Reynolds as Green Lantern and Ryan Reynolds yeah. as Deadpool. The, the weird thing is, is that Ryan Reynolds playing Green Lantern is technically canon to the MCU whenever they bring yes. Deadpool in. It is, it is. It That's is right, they didn't canon. mention it. <laughs> bring it you all together. Else is funny? If you watch uh, the Teen Titans cartoons, Stan Lee has a cameo in it. What? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Hold, Stanley hold had a cameo up. in Teen Titan. Yeah. yeah. The Teen Titan movie. It's called, I think, Teen Titan Go movie or Teen Titan movie. I, it's um, Teen Titans <gasps> Go, the movie. Yeah. Stanley has a cameo in it. So he so actually I, has a cameo in the DC movie. I used to watch Teen Titans Go because I'm so used to the original Teen Titans, and Teen Titans yeah. Go is like this kid's, like, you know, yeah, yeah. abomination of it. But, um, okay, maybe I need to give it a chance. Because... Yeah, weirdly enough, the movie is actually probably the best, uh, Oh yeah, out of it's the actually surprisingly series. good. Okay, they they, <laughs> they save Bruce's parents and then they like kill his parents. It's so weird. <laughs> Robin what? literally kills <laughs> Bruce's yeah. Robin literally kills Bruce's parents. <laughs> it's so weird. Uh, and, and technically, don't they kill they kill Aquaman too by putting like the uh, soda can rings around his neck? Oh yes, you know what? how like yes yes you know how like you have those like six pack and they have the rings and yeah, then the it's like oh never throw. Yeah, never throw them in the ocean. So they show like Aquaman dying because they did that. Okay, I need to watch <laughs> this before I finish it's, Bridgerton now because it's, it's actually pretty funny. <laughs> but wait, what were we talking about again? Oh, Moon, Moon Knight, Knight right? <laughs> and cameos and Moon Knight being. Oh, before Oscar we talk about Isaac. Moon Knight, you want to know something really cool? Uh, you know how they always have the Marvel intro. Mm-hmm. Yeah. In the beginning of the stuff, they actually added Eternals in the intro. So shout out to Eternals. Whoa, I love that. Yeah, so I, I don't know. I don't know why I noticed. I just think it's cool. I, no, no, they're gonna make tie that of... in then because that's what they do. Yeah, yeah, maybe right. So because we'll I don't remember which Marvel intro it was, but they had like the shattering of the universe, and we thought it was a cool effect, but it was foreshadowing the what if I... the universe like. No, you know what I think is going to happen? So the reason I think the Eternals was mentioned there is because uh, at the end of Eternals, uh, Kit Harrington's character gets this like sword right oh that's right yeah that, oh yeah cause... and then and he teams up with blade and i think blade moon knight and uh was it black knight black knight i yeah. think all three of them are going to team up and i think that's why the eternals are shown in there that's I, my theory i have heard rumors of uh them adapting uh midnight suns which is an actual mm-hmm. team that features uh blade moon knight and uh black knight um but yeah. i don't know how far in that is or how far into you know being announced it is yeah what's really cool about that i think that team actually has a muslim character too i think that excalibur is a woman and i think she i I don't know what race she is but i know she's a muslim woman i think her name might be fatima something or fatima something but i think she would be in it too yeah i i i feel like i know who you're talking about and it's like on the tip of my tongue but i oh yeah okay this makes sense because morbius is also part of the midnight suns comic series so yeah Ghost Rider, Blade, Morbius, Doctor <laughs> Strange. Uh, and then wh- what else did they do on the show? I just really like the way they did the fight scenes where they didn't show any fight scenes. Like, how dope is it that, like, the best fight scenes are the ones that you don't even see? Just like, yeah. oh, I guess he kicked their ass. <laughs> like, oh, my hand's <laughs> covered in blood. What what happened here? Okay. Yeah, so and... cool. Oh, what? I'm and driving like... a car and there's a yeah. gun in my yeah. hand? I, I think... I honestly had to refrain from texting my cousin because he's a big Moon Knight fan to ask what's going on because I feel like some of the, some of the charm of the show is the kind of mystery behind you know Mark Spector and like uh, Stephen Grant and so I was like mm-hmm. I don't want to get spoiled but I want to know what's going on a little bit more. Yeah, 
I probably I read like five did. comics, and I was like, you know what, man, I this is too much. I gotta, I want to, I don't want to be spoiled. I want to know what's happening. But the comics don't seem like the ones that I've read don't seem like they have anything to do with this. So they seem very different. Mm. But I don't know. I'm pretty excited. I love the fight scenes. I love how they showed like the mirrors and the reflection the whole time, kind of giving us an idea of like this is what he is gonna look like. Uh, this is not really him. Um, it was interesting, but I thought it was funny. My favorite part was when uh, <laughs> when he was like, uh, she was betrayed by her avatar. And he goes, oh, the blue people. He's like, no. He goes, oh, the anime? Oh, the anime. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I thought uh, that scene was super funny. I love Avatar, though, so I get it. Yeah. <laughs> I like that Stephen Grant watches Avatar The Last Airbender. That's <laughs> Wait, does that mean Avatar's canon MCU? Or does the- that mean yes. the M. Night Shyamalan film is canon? Please, No. <laughs> No, 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 no. That's not canon. Don't do the anime. He mentioned the anime. He didn't mention the movie. Okay, okay, good. But, but does anyone really mention the movie? That is true. That is fair. That is fair. I don't but... want that to be canon in the MCU. <laughs> I just, I just love the fact that they mentioned it. It's one of my favorite cards. It's so good. Speaking of like the Oscars and like freaking shitting on like animation, like. Avatar Lush Air- Airbender, it's amazing. We talked about colonialism, classism, racism, nationalism. Like, oh my God, that, Slavery, that show is phenomenal. Uh, yeah. You know, generational I... trauma with Grand Paku and Katara. I mean, just everything, really. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I can oh go on God. and on. Oh my God. <laughs> yes. Yo, shout out to uh, uh, Uncle Iroh. <laughs> May, yeah. Uh, the first voice actor, may he rest in peace. Second yeah, one. R.I.P. I hope you're well. <laughs> R.I.P. Yeah. It's good, man. But no, man, I'm I'm a big fan of of Moon Knight. It's not my favorite show, uh, but I'm digging it. But I'm that's kind it. of the point yeah. of Disney Plus and Marvel. Like, it's not meant to be like the blockbuster shows that everybody likes. This is for the more niche stuff that certain yeah. people will yeah. like, and I'm glad yeah. about that. I'm glad about that. I think the only show that like I felt like super connected to that like because I felt like it was going into the multiverse was Loki because that it felt a little bigger than just a show. Um, but everything else, I'm like, I think like WandaVision too. But WandaVision, I feel like we were starved for yeah. Marvel oh, stuff, yeah. and awesome. it came out early, and we were going nuts, right? Um, but yeah, everything else is like yeah. at that same level, and I love the fact that it's Moon Knight and 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 is very different and is unique because. Not everything has to be for everybody, right? Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. there are some things that like other people enjoy, and then there's something that people don't enjoy. I didn't care for Hawkeye, but I'm sure there's lots of people that love Hawkeye. Yeah, I, I think the most controversial take I've had on my TikTok account is that I thought Hawkeye was just okay. You know, nothing special. Yeah, that's controversial. Yeah, yeah. so many people also, said like, pig. No, I, what? I, and, and not even not in Hawkeye. I think. It's one that I didn't like too much, but like even worse than that, I didn't like What If, and like What oh, If is a yeah. big part of the multiverse stuff. And I only liked one episode, and that was the one with uh, T'Challa when T'Challa went to Star Lord. That was amazing episode, loved it. Everything else, it was good to watch, but it's nothing amazing. Uh, I'm gonna disagree with you that, but going back to what Ash said, well, that, um... that, that's fair. Like, I, I, I like the fact that you can disagree with that, right? Like, I yeah. like that, like. Marvel is making so much more stuff and there's going to be something that connects with you that won't connect with me and vice versa. And that's okay. And I I love that. And I'm still going to watch everything. I'm going to give everything a chance for sure. No, I'm just more curious about why people are flaming that take that Falcon or sorry, that, uh, yeah, <laughs> that uh, was Hawkeye that, wasn't that great. Yeah. All I said was, uh, Moon Knight is better than Hawkeye because to be honest, what it took me a week to get through the first two episodes of hawkeye and then all of a sudden people were like you betrayed me i'll take and i'm like it, it was just okay i like i heard the same thing about falcon and the winter soldier and that's you know one of my favorites and I'm not saying we, that we need to normalize crazy. shows being just okay man we got to normalize yeah. shows being just okay there's not everything is phenomenal right mm-hmm. like it's okay and Listen, there are some things that, like, I really love about Moon Knight, and a lot of it, what I love about Moon Knight is, like, the culture, right? I love learning about Egyptian culture, and I love getting an idea of what's going on. Even, like, shows like Grownish, 
blackish dear white people like i love those things because i was like oh i get to learn about like these people's communities and cultures and see how similar they are to mine and i love that stuff that's a big thing for me right and that's why I think there's going to be a lot of people really liking Miss Marvel because I think they're going to focus a lot on the culture. And if they do that and they pull it off, I'm so happy. I'm so happy. I don't care how relevant it is to the Marvel universe, but as long as they get the essence of her family right, like that show will be a W for me. And I don't care what anyone says. All right. Well, speaking of Moon Knight, guys, I guess we're going to have to say goodnight because that's the end of today's episode. <laughs> is there a moon outside <laughs> at night? <laughs> there is. is there... <laughs> it's a big moon piece uh, of pie. <laughs> <laughs> Ash, thank you for joining us today. Yeah, that, yes, thank, thank you. you for joining us, Ash. Yeah, thank you for having me. Uh, this is uh, te- technically my first uh, podcast appearance since I kind of blew up on TikTok, so this is this is amazing. Awesome. Great, man. Wish yeah, you what's your TikTok sh- handle, by the way? Uh, oh, yeah. Give us your TikTok yeah, handle. My TikTok handle is uh, at HeyDave. Uh, it's spelled H3YD4B3. Yes, it is a Homestuck reference. <laughs> yes, I am embarrassed by that. <laughs> awesome. Oh, awesome. my God. <laughs> well, thank you for coming on. <laughs> and I'm going to go follow you on TikTok. <laughs> Yes, that's awesome. All right. Well, thanks, guys, and uh, come back next week for the next episode. Peace out, guys.